Hi friends, today I want to talk about building self-awareness. So this is an important topic for me. It's something that I've been sort of intentionally working towards, um, working on for years now. And it's also something that I've gotten feedback on uh, around my writing uh, and that you know folks have noticed I'm able to sort of observe what's happening with me and that channels through my work. And so I've gotten a bunch of questions around, you know, how do you foster self-awareness? So I want to talk about that today. Uh, there's two main things that I'd love for you to keep in mind with self-awareness. So there's perception, basically being able to see things and notice things. And then there's reflection, which is kind of more about taking the things that you perceive and noticing patterns within them and being able to learn and grow. And you kind of have to do both of these in order for there to be you know, effectiveness in this practice of self-awareness that you're building. So let's talk about both. Um, some of the common techniques that people use in order to adopt um, you know, and sort of improve their ability to look within, uh, I'll talk about those and how they play into them. So the first one I'll talk about is just um, you know, the, the more common things that we hear about are things around mindfulness, meditation, uh, journaling, and uh, I'll talk about those three. So let's start with mindfulness. So mindfulness, you know, it's obviously a complex concept, but it really doesn't have to be. Um, you know, most of these concepts like self-awareness and, and meditation, you know, we, we can really take them with a very light heart. Um, it doesn't have to be such a sort of serious, uh, you know, you sit down and become self-aware and you're meditating and all these types of things, right? Um, we can really sort of find moments of joy um, and, and really seek to bring them into our lives in a more natural way. So, you know, I've been meditating for a while, for, for years now, you know, I used to do kind of hour-long sessions and now I do shorter sessions. And what I find is that the most valuable forms uh, of these practices happen throughout the day rather than having them be this fixed thing that we do at one point. So mindfulness is the practice of just sort of being mindful of every little you know thing that you're doing. Now you don't do this constantly, that would be really overwhelming, but every so often, so you know, you're going for a walk and rather than just sort of going on the walk and listening to a podcast or, you know, taking a phone call, which you can definitely do, you know, try something I enjoy doing, you know, is, um, just not listening to anything at all. Uh, you know, just going for a walk. And when I do that, I sort of stop and notice things. Um, and I'll allow myself to engage in that. You know, even if, oh, do I look weird? I'm just sort of standing and staring at something. And, you know, the other day I noticed there was a, there was a bird eating a worm. And it was kind of like past noon, and so I was just kind of watching it. And I watched every bit about it, you know, well, look at the color of its wings and kind of the way it's sitting and the way it's sort of protecting its worm and sort of eating it while sitting on a branch. It's kind of, it seems like a challenging thing. Um, you know, and I also noticed it was like late. So, you know, the the poor worm thought, oh, only early birds get, get the worm, but hey, got it anyway. So there's... You know, I think, so, so what's the point of, of doing that? What's the point of stopping and looking at that? Well, first of all, there's sort of a connection that we have with the present reality. Um, you know, it sort of, it really gives meaning to even little things. And, and there's a whole realm of um, sort of value personally in terms of your your enjoyment of life that can come from, from those moments. But also, uh, they serve as practice. So when you stop, and look and sort of immerse yourself, you know, tasting the food that you're eating, you know, sensing how the, the drink is kind of coming in and um, smelling sort of what's around you, listening to those sounds, you're practicing circumventing the, the thought loops, which are always running. And it's important to really work at that because it's not easy, right? We are really designed to be just thinking all the time. Well, I shouldn't say we're designed, but the world today is designed kind of to just keep us thinking and scrolling and thinking and thinking and thinking, consuming information. And so when you tell someone, oh, just stop doing that. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not easy. You know, you can't just, you can't just stop. Um, 
so so that is one form of practice that I try and do every day is just stop and notice one thing at least uh, in that day and you know by doing so you, you sort of turn it into a habit and you start to be able to notice other things so you know when you meditate for example you're also building practice so you know a lot of people think you know when they start meditating that the point is to silence your thoughts well you know if you try and do that it's it's very difficult uh, you can't really do that what you really want to do is just sort of notice them acknowledge them and then and then go back to meditating so again it's a similar practice where you, there is a thought loop running and you're just trying to not let it control you just for a few minutes you know so so mindfulness and meditation are these practices now if you do those things um, you know that will help you feel more calm and it, it'll give you a better sense of control of your thoughts and, and sort of your state of being throughout the day but we're here to talk about self-awareness so where does that come from well when you take sort of those moments and you start to actually observe them you observe what you notice you know then you start to notice things about yourself so there's a couple of ways uh, so first the, you know the most straightforward one that that I practice and, and recommend is journaling so you know if you're able to have one of those moments throughout the day you could journal about it and that makes it a little bit more real it makes it a little bit more sort of consistent the second thing you can start to do is instead of just stopping to observe nature stop to observe yourself so you know, you might be in a certain moment throughout the day and you just kind of pause and be like, what am I thinking about right now? Um, but, you know, am I upset? Am I happy? Am I angry? Is this, is this appropriate for the situation? Okay, cool. And, you know, maybe in difficult situations where you react a certain way to someone, um, you might even notice how you react to them. And, and what is the source of that? So if you come back to this later that day, you might say, well, you know, I, I, I did say some things that, you know, maybe I didn't need to say it that way, but it was probably, you know, now that I look at it, I can see it's kind of sourced from, from this and that. Um, and, and so one of the things that I think is worth noting here is that, you know, thought loops are always running and they're not harmless is how I would phrase it. I would say that they can be harmful because they can mislead us into thinking into believing those thoughts. So thoughts aren't facts, they're just thoughts, right? Um, and so what do I mean by that, that they can be harmful? So I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, I'll give you two examples. So, you know, I remember I was texting with a friend and, you know, we had just met up and, and I was telling them how, um, you know, it was great to see them and, and, and they just kind of made this offhand comment, uh, you know, kind of like, like, oh wow, you, 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 you know, you, you want to, it was, it was basically a joke and it was kind of in poor taste and I was kind of looking at it and I was like, God, oh, okay, why'd you say that? And, you know, I came up with the, the jokes or comebacks or whatever it is. Um, and I normally would have done that. I normally would have just gone straight into that. Uh, it's like, you know, it's like, Hey, they did something. I'm going to do something back. And instead I actually paused and just sort of looked at the situation and I realized oh, okay, now that I think about their situation, they're actually going through some stuff and this is their like poorly executed way of asking for help. Um, and when I notice that, then I see everything that they're saying in a different light and I'm able to respond differently. Uh, but I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't have this practice of pausing and seeing where my reactions are going. And a lot of times our reactions are controlled by these sort of... Um, you know, sort of, sort of reactionary thoughts that kind of want to protect us. So, so that's where I'll talk about, you know, the last thing I want to talk about today is sort of why, why do these thoughts play like this? Why do these sort of stories keep playing? And a lot of times they're the same, same stories again and again, sort of same thoughts. And you're kind of like, what, how many times am I going to notice this? How many times am I going to um, have to circumvent this? And the thing is, a lot of these thoughts are manifestations of our ego, capital E. Um, I'm, I'll include a link here. I actually kind of want to do a separate video just on this, but um, the ego, you know, you can describe it in many ways, but it's essentially a, a sort of a manifestation of a lot of our 
upbringings, a lot of our desires, and its kind of goal is to protect us, really. Most of the time, what it's trying to do is protect us. So it sees a threat and it freaks out a little bit, gives you some stories that, oh, maybe this is gonna happen, maybe that's gonna happen, oh no. And the reason why they're the same ones again and again is because it feeds you them because there's it thinks there's sort of familiarity in hearing the same stories again and again, which is kind of silly, but I mean, that's what its job is. And so if you are not observing it, then you get absorbed by it and you believe all of these thoughts. So I'll give you one example of this. Um, I was writing recently, I was writing, uh, you know, I had this idea for this essay and I was thinking, I was like, Oh, wow, that's a really good idea. Actually, you know what? This might be one of my better posts. This could be really good. And I kind of sat and observed that. I mean, that was a story that was playing in my head. And I was like, I mean, yeah, I mean, it could be. It could be really good, but I mean, that's pretty, I don't know. That seems pretty uh, like we're overestimating. We're getting a little too excited here. Literally, I haven't even written anything down. You're kind of already telling me this is going to change the world. Like, all right, I mean, maybe, but let's just temper expectations a little bit. You know, and then the next day I get down to writing it and the story is very different. It's kind of like, oh, this is the worst thing you've ever written, Salman. Like, this is trash. No one wants to see this. <laughs> and, you know, normally I would have, you know, in the past I would have actually bought into those stories and felt really good the previous day and felt really bad in that moment, right? And when you're when you're riding that roller coaster, it's exhausting. Oh God, like, okay, is it horrible? Is it good? Just tell me so I know how to feel, you know? Um, and so it's important for us to kind of, kind of step back and just sort of look at it and be like, you know, <laughs> your story has really changed pretty often. I mean, it's, it's not, it wasn't that great yesterday and it's, it's not that bad today. It's fine. Let's just keep going. And if you can sort of look at yourself with humor, um, look at yourself with lightness, then you're able to notice things and, and appreciate them and even take input from others. So, you know, this is something I work on all the time. You know, we're never perfect. And so I'm, I have to really work hard on this is if someone tells me something, my instinct is to take it as an attack, right? My instinct is like, oh, oh what are they trying to say about me? No, in fact, I, this and this, you don't understand, right? When maybe that's useful input, right? Maybe it's just another input that we could see. Um, and if you have your own observations, if you have your own journals and your own, you know, maybe post after you meditate, you take some notes about your thoughts or, or whatever it is that you do every day to journal. When someone says something now, then you're kind of like, you know, that is kind of consistent with what I've seen. And if you're light, if you're light, if you literally feel light, then you can take it and be like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, sometimes my stories are like that. You're right, yeah, yeah. No, I, should be, I should be cognizant of that. Because, you know, it's not you. Those thoughts, your thoughts aren't you, right? Um, they're just thoughts. They just, they're just attempts at your brain to try and feed you the thing that it thinks is best for you right now. It's not necessarily always right because a lot of it is trained around, you know, the past when we were literally trying to survive. You know, survival instinct. There's threats everywhere. I could die at any minute. I could be eaten. Um, we're not in that world anymore. So, you know, Elizabeth Gilbert says this about her inner critic. She says, you know, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, but your services aren't needed right now. You know, I appreciate it. I know you're trying to help. You know, I, I know, I know. It's okay. You're not needed right now. And so all of these kind of work together where you have, you kind of want to develop a place where you're seeing, every day you're seeing something. You're seeing something about the outside world, which helps you practice. Seeing something about yourself. You're, you're taking practices, um, you know, meditation or, or, or walks or whatever, uh, it is that you do to kind of help you see better, see with more clarity. And then you're kind of doing other exercises of reflection. You're journaling, you're, um, you know, talking to others. Um, you know, for me, writing is a really, really big part of this. So I take some of the lessons that I've learned through all the journaling and all that, and then I write about them. And so then people are kind of asking me like, well, how did you see that about yourself, you know? 
Well, it took a lot of time. Uh, I just, you know, after a while, it just kept showing up and showing up and showing up in the journals or showing up in my daily observations. And I was kind of like, okay, I think there's a pattern here. And so it becomes a lot easier to write about because you're kind of writing about your own truth, you know, but you're finally able to see it. And that's a beautiful thing because then you can write about your own experiences. Uh, and, 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 and that helps you learn about yourself. So you can make the practice of sharing, you know, what you observe about yourself another force, uh, a tool for reinforcement of your, of your self-awareness, um, which is something I really cherish. I really, really love that, that I can share sort of what I'm going through and then others see that and it, and it helps them, but it also helps me. So, you know, you want to build all these different practices so that slowly, bit by bit, you know, you, um, you, can, you can sort of start to get to a point where you see more clearly and you notice the patterns and you're less captured, right? Captured is an important word here in meditation when they say, oh, you, if you are captured by your thoughts, it's okay. It's okay, just start again, right? And that's the same thing you wanna do every single day. Every day we're going to be captured, you know, you could do this for years, your whole lifetime. You're never gonna, well, I mean, at least in my view, I'm never gonna reach a point where, okay, I figured it out. I know me now because <laughs> I'm changing all the time. So, so it's important to have that practice every day and I make mistakes and I learn from them and I observe those. Um, but you know, can you make it fun? Can you make it light? Uh, you know, can you tell a story about yourself like I did just now with the writing where you kind of laugh at it, right? It's kind of silly, you know. Um, and when you can laugh at it, then you can look at it, you can separate yourself from it and it doesn't, doesn't harm you to, be, to admit it. It doesn't harm you to acknowledge it because that's the first step, right? Is acknowledging, okay, there's some, this is happening. Um, yeah. So I hope this was helpful. Um, you know, I appreciate uh, Florian uh, who sent me this question. And if there's other questions that you have like this, I'd love to keep exploring uh, in this way. Thanks for watching and I uh, hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye.